A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. What frustrates you about street photography? Is gear important? How do you organise all your photos? So we've been on YouTube for three years now, if you can believe it. Uh, going back to our first video, revisiting it. I don't know what we were thinking with the colour grade. We went for this sort of like piss wash. It looks like we're sort of like swimming in beer. Hopefully our videos have improved a bit since then. We thought we'd kick off 2023 with a Q&A. We asked you guys a few questions on Instagram, so thank you very much for submitting them. Let's get cracking. What is your everyday camera setup? I kind of chop and change between the Lumix GX80 and the 28mm equivalent lens, or a Canon 6D with that lovely sharp 40mm lens, which I made a video about recently. I, do, I am favoring the Canon 6D at the moment just because I love an optical viewfinder and I like having access to a full frame sensor. I always find myself coming back to a DSLR. I just think you can't beat a DSLR. So my everyday carry is the Leica M2, which I've owned for a couple of years now and I've been using on and off, but more frequently I've been using it daily because I just like the experience of just leaving the house in the morning and I've got this camera, it's fully manual. I don't have to think about are the batteries charged? Is the SD card clear? Uh, I just have this camera, a couple of rolls of film in my pocket and I'm gone. So yeah, it's just an enjoyable experience. I think it's motivating, it's inspiring kind of to just bring this and not have to worry about anything else. And I've just been really enjoying it. What have you learned from making four issues of a street photography magazine? I think I've learned that I like editing photos. I like editing other people's photos, uh, sequencing photos, putting putting it all together in, in a magazine that is digestible and feels like it's well considered and feels like certain series sit well with other series and there's a nice complement to contrast with them and mixing different types of content like written content with images um yeah i've learned a lot and i've learned that i just enjoy making a magazine i didn't i didn't know that and i enjoy looking forward to what we're going to do in 2023 and all the different ideas and new features we're going to include. To what extent do you think gear doesn't matter? I think gear matters. Of course it matters. For me, I think gear drives my curiosity. If I get a new camera or if I try a new camera, not necessarily an expensive camera. Um, one of the cameras that really changed how I saw and how I photographed was a Canon 6D. And that was a cheap camera. I got a super cheap lens but I used it solidly for a year and I still use it. I still have it. It's still one of my favorite cameras to pick up. And purely because it's a different way to photograph, looking through the optical viewfinder um, is a different experience than looking at a mirrorless camera or looking through the, the viewfinder on a mirrorless camera. So I think, I think gear matters. It's good to experiment. It's good to be curious. If you can afford, if you're lucky that you can uh, afford to get gear and different types of gear, I think there's no harm in it. However, I do also agree that sometimes you end up buying gear because it looks cool or it's got a certain red badge on it and it might be a completely inappropriate camera for you. It might, it might make you a worse photographer because it just doesn't suit your style of photography. So like personally, I know I've made mistakes in buying gear in the past that just wasn't for me. It didn't suit me. Tried using a Pentax 67 for a good while. I just didn't like anything about the mechanics of using that camera. It wasn't a joyful experience for me. But you know, that happens. We all make mistakes with gear and uh, yeah, don't be too hard on yourselves. What frustrates you about street photography? It can be quite a competitive space in a way. It can be quite tricky to distance yourself from what other people are doing and comparing yourself to what other people are doing and the sort of social media competition in a sense. I think I just have to constantly remind myself that it isn't a race, it isn't a competition. It's purely just for fun, it's relaxing, and it's just generally like a great activity just walking with a camera and exploring the world around you. Thoughts on 85mm for street, uh, because it's coming under some heat. Apparently, I like 85 mil, I like 50, I like 35, 28, all the mils, I like them. Um, I think it's probably more important what you're pointing your camera at and not so important what lens you're using. I've seen equally boring photos taken on 28 mil. I think it's more down to what you frame and less so about the equipment you use to frame it. But I do also wanna say that 
I think there's a tendency to go negative in certain corners of street photography because I do believe algorithms drive that, you know. They want you to be annoyed and upset and frustrated because you're more engaged when you're like that. And you have to be aware of it and maybe don't lean into it and maybe don't run with it. And if you've got a complaint about how someone else takes photographs, don't voice it. It's pointless. It's absolutely pointless. Um, just focus on your own work, you know, because it's time better spent than just sitting around complaining about other people, which you genuinely get nothing from, except a sense of anxiety and dread, which you're better off without. How do you organize all your photos? This is something I get asked quite a bit, actually, and I don't really have a great answer for photo organization. During the various COVID lockdowns, I did try my best to do some categorization and some tagging, and I ended up with just loads and loads of subfolders of like, dogs being carried, dogs on the train, dogs in transit, dogs at the park, extra small dogs, extra cute dogs, and it kind of just com went completely out of hand, you know, so um, I think if you can set aside some time every week or every month to try and categorize and organize your photos, you will definitely feel the benefit down the line, but it can be very tricky, particularly with street photographers who are going out very often and shooting thousands and thousands of photos, to find the time to sit down and try and categorize your images just can be quite it's not particularly enjoyable so it's quite hard to find the time and find the motivation to do that if you have any suggestions of how you organize your photos let me know in the comments below because i'm at a bit of a loss what have i learned since issue one one thing i've learned is that it's good to be open to different styles of photography one of my favorite issues is the one we included Teresa freitas in because her style of photography is wildly colorful and sitting that next to some black and white documentary photography was really interesting and I enjoyed putting that together and I think going forward we hope to do more of that style of thing so yeah that's something I've learned just just be a bit more open it doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional view of what street photography is what are you excited to photograph in 2023 I'm excited to photograph more of the UK hoping to actually leave the country this year I haven't been abroad since 2019 so I've got a couple of trips planned I think having spent so long photographing London uh, just any change of scenery is really motivating and fun we'd like to get back into taking street portraits I was on a little bit of a roll with that in 2019 2020 but I kind of fell off it a bit and I've found it quite hard to build up that confidence to approach people again just excited to take photos in general just always pumped to be out with a camera so i know that's a bit of a vague answer but it's the truth just taking a little break from the questions to thank our sponsor for today's video squarespace i've personally been using squarespace for years now to host my professional photography portfolio to organize my projects and for my online print store the interface is so straightforward and so intuitive it's really easy to update with new templates to update with new content i can't recommend them enough if you're looking for somewhere to host your photography portfolio, go to squarespace.com forward slash framelines for 10% off your first order. If not photography, what else would you do? I would be a Twitch streamer playing Dark Souls games for the rest of my life. Uh, I love those From Software games. I have got 100% achievements on Bloodborne, and that's one of my life's greatest achievements, if I'm honest. That is one of my favorite games. I love it. So yeah, I guess I'd be a Twitch streamer. Or probably not. I mean, if I, I probably couldn't make a decent living at that. So who wants to watch a 40 year old man play a video game? What else would I do? Um, I guess design, if I'm honest, if I give you a boring answer to be design. Um, I was a designer for 15 years and I gave it up to pursue photography because I love photography more. But if I didn't have photography, I'd have design. Thoughts on AI art. AI art and the whole concept of it uh, gives me endless amounts of anxiety. Just the thought of it, people producing art or what they consider to be art or what they label as art, when it's just something that's generated by a robot that's stolen a bunch of art from people and just presents it to you as if you've made something unique or something that conveys a personal feeling that you have about the world, which it really doesn't. It's purely surface level. It's empty, it's empty art. It's without any degree of humanity whatsoever. And I hope it goes away. I hope it's a trend and people wise up to it and people feel that it's a completely unnatural way of experiencing imagery. And I just hope it goes away. It, 
it's horrible. <laughs> it's genuinely horrible. And I've seen people produce street photography using AI art tools or AI prompts, you know, like show me a street photography, show me, show me a street photograph by whatever, Joel Merowitz, and they type that into a prompt and they get an image back and they're like, wow, I've done a street photography. And it's in no way related to the world in which we live. It's empty, it's hollow. It's a hollow thing. I, qu I feel quite strongly about it and this rant could go on for an hour. Um, so yeah, I don't like it. I don't like AI art. Can we submit photos to Framelines magazine? It's something we're working on and we're hoping to roll out in some form over the next year. We just need to work out the logistics of it. For example, we want to be able to get back to everybody that submitted photos and I'd hate to be able to like not have time to properly let people know and we just want to do it properly. And at the moment, it, Framelines is just Shane and I, it's just the two of us doing everything. So we need to iron out how to do it properly so not to, to disappoint people really. That was super fun. Like, thank you to everybody who submitted a question on Instagram. If you have any follow-up questions, please do drop them in the comments below. Would you like us to do more of these? Let us know. As always, a massive thank you to everybody who's been buying Framelines magazine. If you want to pick up a copy, head to frame-lines.com or the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching along. See you next time.